if you know your Bible. In this current world, we are only living the Bible days now. Very practical. Acts 27, when the storm rose up in the sea, Paul said to the people in the boat, say, remain with me. No anxiety, no fear. Say, but as long as you remain with me, as long as you are connected with me, no life shall be lost. He said, but I may not guarantee you if you jump into the water, you will die. Remain with me. And at the end of the day, the Bible recorded that the boat capsized. But yet, no life was lost because of connectivity. Ladies and gentlemen, if you see the car where my son came out from, if you see the car where the man of God was saved from, you won't believe that anybody is alive. Bullets everywhere. The bullet passed close to his legs and couldn't reach him. It is called divine preservation. It is called divine preservation. Divine preservation is real. Is real. All you need to do is to remain connected. And divine preservation becomes your heritage. What a God we serve. What a God. He said they took his mantle and placed the mantle in the chest. Even a man who does not believe, a man who doesn't believe, the wife is a member of our church, the man kept fighting his wife. Don't come to church, beating the woman. The woman will come sneakily. And one day the man was to travel to Bauchi. Because the woman knows the husband does not believe. You know the testimony very well. You know the testimony? The woman took the mantle, sneaked into the husband's bag, and put the mantle inside the bag and prayed the prayer. The God of Pastor Ago that is covering me, cover my husband on this journey. The man was not even aware. Behold, the man took the journey and there was a ghastly motor accident. Ghastly. In his own vehicle. And when the accident was happening, something took the man out of the car. And he was sitting outside watching his fellow colleagues in the car. Some insulting and dying. He called his wife from the scene. He said, this is what just happened. There was an accident. And the wife said, open your bag. Look at so-so-so place. There is something there. The man opened and brought it. He said, what is this? He said, that is the mantle from our church. Hey. Church, I am sure you will not forget in a hurry. Our sister in the house, Mrs. Yonungo, favor Yonungo. I'm not sure this church can forget this one in a hurry. The young sister, her elder sister or younger sister, came to visit her here attended the church and the young lady was traveling back to Enugu and the sister took the mantle and gave to her sister where is Mrs. Yonungo? look at the woman over there when you finish you go and ask her she shared this testimony on the altar she took the mantle and gave to the sister after the sister attended church and had the testimony of the mantle she took the mantle and said, sister, this is all I have to give to you. Take! You are preserved on this journey. The sister held the mantle and they were going to Enugu. When they got to Ninth Mile, those places where they have those ditches between Ninth Mile and Enugu, those deep holes, suddenly they got there, their car failed to break and headed straight into the valley. Headed straight into that pit is like from here to the main road. If you have been to Enugu, you understand. The pit is by the road. It's like from here to the express. I know it. The car headed straight for the pit and began to somersault. If you say five times, it's an understatement. Because from that hill to the valley, if you have passed through that road, you know what I'm talking about? The sister said as soon as the brake of the car failed and the car was heading, heading for the ditch, she took her mantle and raised it. Oh God of Pastor Agbo, where are you? That 
was the last word the sister spoke. Suddenly again. That's the sister over there. Sister Favor Yonungu. You can ask her. Suddenly the angel of this commission took the sister from inside the car. Kept the sister by the road. And the sister was watching the car some insulting into the pit. The car some insulted down to the last part of the pit. Everybody gone. The sister sat down and watched the dead bodies. My God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Look at what is happening. The first bus that my son was to enter. People inside were kidnapped. We are killed and kidnapped. But the same boss, God prevented him from entering. Yes. The one he entered, the enemy came again. He said, no, a word went ahead of him. I speak ahead of you. I receive. Oh my God. I speak ahead of somebody I receive. here. Whatever the enemy's plan for you and against you, yes. it shall not work in the name of Jesus. Amen. If your amen is louder, you will enjoy divine preservation. Amen. If your amen is the loudest, you will enjoy divine preservation. Amen. I don't know who the enemy have a mark for an accident hey. or for death under this commission yes. or underneath the sound of my voice. But by the mantle and the grace of God available on this altar, anyone that is a mark for any accident, that accident is here by cancer. Hey. Please let your amen be louder than anything. Hey. If your amen is louder, pick the first miracle. Amen. Divine preservation is real. Amen. Hear me and hear me well. Yes. By the mantle and the grace of God covering this ministry, covering this great commission, better by God, I, I decree upon your life. I receive. Nothing that the enemy of blood shall work against you. Amen. You will enjoy preservation. Amen. In the morning preservation. In the evening preservation. In the night preservation. Let somebody's hallelujah be the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Jehovah Omeliwo, Omeliwo, Jimo Zibinigwe, Anasi Alele, Anasi Hallelujah! 
Anasi haleluya Anasi haleluya Jehova omeliwo omeliwo Dimo si milingwe Anasi haleluya Anasi haleluya Jehova omeliwo Blessed be your holy name. Lord, I pray that everyone here will enjoy divine preservation. Amen. Let everyone here enjoy divine preservation. Amen. Divine protection. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Congratulate your neighbor to the right and to the left. Tell your neighbor, say congratulations for being in church. Congratulations for being in church. For they grow from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared before the Lord God in Zion. <laughs> they grew from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared before Jesus in Zion. They don't get weak. Bible says, and the house of David became stronger and stronger. And that of Saul became weaker and weaker. I prophesy. Whoever is fighting you, the Spirit of God will weak them tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please clap to sense better for my God and take your seat. I promised you, I promised you on Tuesday that I will continue the teaching we began on Tuesday. How many of you know that teaching? Yes, sir. What's the theme of the teaching of Tuesday? Eh? Eh? Bro, Israel, you said what? Choir, you said what? Healing by the word. Were you blessed on Tuesday? Church, were you blessed on Tuesday? If you were blessed on Tuesday, let me hear your hallelujah. And I promised you that we will continue from there today. But this afternoon while I was meditating on the service, this evening the Lord said to me, he's sending two people. Wait, wait. He said there are two people coming to church here today. And they are coming to church because of what the enemy said against them. Take your seat. Listen very attentively. And he said, my son, I'm going to give you a message for two people. I'm going to give you a message. For how many people? Two people. I don't know if you are part of those two people. This is what the Lord said. He said, hold on. You will like it. <laughs> he said, the message tonight is for two people whom the enemies have vowed to destroy. He said, this message I'm giving to you as you preach it there's going to be a shaking in their kingdom. And so, healing by the word, the part B of healing by the word, I'll preach it on Sunday. But listen tonight. The message tonight is a prophetic message, very short, very short and simple, for those two people, which I know I am number one. When the Lord was speaking to me this afternoon, I didn't know the Lord was speaking to me. I am number one. The message is a very simple message from the book of Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37. Put it on the board everyone. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37. Nobody here will weep. I said you will not weep. 
I said you will not weep. If Tuesday message blessed your life, then be here on Sunday. I will continue on Sunday for Tuesday message. But listen to this prophetic message for somebody here. Can we read only Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37? One, two, three, go. Motemite will take it again loud and clear. One, two, three, go. Very quickly tonight, the Lord sent me to talk to two people. Fortunately, I am number one. <laughs> hey. Leave that Bible on the ball. Not everybody will say. Who is he that saith and it cometh to pass when God have not signed it? Very quickly to, tonight, we are doing a teaching very simple on what I title the enemy's word is not final. Please, you need to listen to me. And let me deliver the message to the person whom God wants to set free to now. The enemy's word is not final. Your uncle's word against you is not final. Even those evil men and evil women speaking against you, their words are not final. Whether being a stepbrother or stepmother or step anything, speaking against you, their words are not final. It doesn't matter who is prophesying against you, their words are not final. Oh, stand up on your feet. <laughs> Walk to five persons. Hear me first. Hear me. You will go to five people and tell them the enemy's word against you is not final. God has the final say. Go to five people and tell them don't be afraid my brother. Don't be afraid my sister. The enemy's word against you is not final. But God has the final say. Walk across to them and announce to them the enemy's word are not final. Their word about your ministry is not final. Their word about your children is not final. Their word about your education is not final. Their word about your children is not final. Their word about your finances is not final. Amen. Their word about your career is not final. Amen. But God has the final say. Amen. Take your seat, everybody. I told you. I told you. God is angry. Yes. Look at me, everybody. Look up. Don't write anything. Just listen. After the service, go and pick the tape. Or just go and watch it online or something. God is angry with the wicked. The wicked is making statements every day. The wicked is threatening the children of God on a daily basis. And I have told you before that there is a part of God that will not show up until they threaten you. There is a department of God that will not show up in anybody's life until the enemy is threatening you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, if you read from verse 29 all through to verse 31, Peter speaking there, he said, Oh God, behold their threatening. Behold their threatening. Oh God, behold their threatening. And grant, oh God, that by the stretching forth of our hands, let signs and wonders be wrought through the name of your son Jesus. This was the prayer of Peter. Acts chapter 4 from verse 29. Behold, they are threatening. Look at what these people are saying. 
Lord, behold their threatening. Look at how they are threatening us. Look at what they are thinking about us. Look at what they are saying against us. Behold, they are threatening. The Bible says, as soon as Peter made that statement, God came down in a mighty form that they never expected. The Bible says from verse 31 that the place where they were gathered, the place began to shake. The place began to shake. In other words, God came down in another dimension. God came down in another power. And what happened? When the place began to shake, the Bible recorded from verse 33. He said, with great power gave the apostles the witness of the kingdom. And great grace was upon you. Yeah. You can't see great power or great grace until the enemy threatens you. Yes, sir. You can't see great power or great grace until the enemy threatens you. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't understand what it means to operate in great power and in great grace, after threatening, when they were threatening Peter, they didn't know that the apostles has power to kill and to make a life. They didn't know that the apostles have the power from heaven. They began to threaten them. But great power came down in Acts chapter 5. If you read from verse 1 all through to verse 10, the Bible says, Peter looked at the man. He said, they are burying you today. A man called Ananias. Peter looked at him and said, today is your final day on the earth here. The Bible says, Ananias fell and he died when the wife appeared. He said, madam, those that buried your husband, look at them at the door. Ananias and Sapphira. Sapphira fell down and was buried. Nobody was living. The Bible says, fear came upon the people. Fear came upon the land. Who did fear came upon? Those people that threatened them began to fear them because God showed up in another dimension. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a part of God that will not show up until the enemy threatens you. Yes, I am speaking to you here tonight. I, I don't know if the enemies have threatened you. Hey, church, Pastor Agbo is under threat. Yes. Everywhere, people are making pronunciation. Yes. And I know that motivates in your workplace, in your families, people are making pronunciation. They are threatening your life and your destiny. They hear me and they hear me well. Everyone threatening you. Hey. My God will show up on your behalf. Yeah. I don't like the way you are saying this amen today. Yeah. Uh -huh. hey. The people that was threatening Peter, as soon as they saw Sapphira and Ananias, the both of them were dead. The Bible says fear came upon the people. Which people did fear came upon? Those people that were threatening them. God brought that power to show to them that my people cannot be molested. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. My people cannot be intimidated. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who is intimidating you. God is about to show up on your behalf. Amen. They threatened them. And then God came down. You know what happened, ladies and gentlemen, in case you are not aware? What made God to begin to kill Egyptians was because Pharaoh threatened Moses. After Moses appeared before Pharaoh, Pharaoh said to Moses, he said, the next time I see you, I kill you. God said, what? You mean you are threatening my servant? My sent servant Moses. You won't go to Pharaoh again. Pharaoh will call for you. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you won't go to Pharaoh again. Yes, sir. Pharaoh is the one that will call for you. Yes, sir. How dare you are threatening my servant? Fire. How dare you are threatening my son? Fire. I know what to do for Pharaoh to look for you. And the Bible says that same night that Pharaoh threatened Moses, that same night God sent an angel. He's called an angel of death, a killer angel. Archangel Michael went into the camp of Egyptians and he began to do some certain things and the Bible says they had no
not broken before Pharaoh sent for Moses and Pharaoh said to Moses come and pack your people go with everything before you go bless me also before you go bless me also ladies and gentlemen if anybody have threatened you before hey. tonight my God will show I said tonight my God will show I don't care who they are yes, they can be governors they can be senators they can be cultists they can be robbers anybody threatening your life I make a pronunciation today my God will show up in your behalf my God will show up on your behalf my God will show up on your behalf Somebody jump up on your feet and shout fire five times. Fire! 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 Who is threatening me? Fire! Who is making incantations against me? Fire! Numbers 23 and verse 23. Yes, sir. There is no enchantment against Jacob. No, Neither is there divination against Israel. No, According to the word of God, yes. the Lord himself has said it, and so shall it be. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, anywhere they are making incantations, Fire. anywhere they are making divinations, Fire. anywhere the necromancers are sitting down, Fire. thinking evil against you. Fire. Thunder will blast your head Whoa. today. Take your seat. Yes. A particular time came. Mashako Pahalate in Daniel chapter 3. The Bible says from verse 19. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 19. The Bible said the king was so angry. He was so angry. He was so furious. Daniel 3 and verse 19. And he said, let them hit the fire seven times. Somebody said threat. Somebody said threat. You are not saying it well. You are not saying it well. Ayayaka. The king said, hit this fire seven times. You know why he said they should hit it seven times? It means because the people have made him angry. As soon as they land inside the fire, let them be roasted. As soon as they land, let them be roasted, including their bones. They heated the fire to the point uh, that the people carrying them to the fire, as soon as they got to the bank of the fire, those people were roasted instantly. The king threatened them, uh, if you don't bow to my God, uh, I will slaughter you through fire. Hey. And the king said uh, they should hit the fire seven times. Uh, when they were hitting the fire, the boys were watching. Uh, the boys were watching. Can I tell you a story that will shock you? Yes, when they were hitting the fire, because it was a threat, as they were hitting the fire, God came down. Why they were hitting the fire? Everybody were feeling heat. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were feeling cold. Ay, 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 ay. They were looking for winter clothes. Hey. What they will wear that will stop the cold that was going on. Ladies and gentlemen, while the fire was heating up, God was coming down in a cold form. The boys were feeling cold instead of heat. That is what it means when a child of God is threatened by any demon, by any devil. God comes down in another form. Hallelujah. Whether they threaten you with fire, my God will turn it to ice block for you. Amen. Whether they threaten you that you will not have money, I prophesy from here, you will have money until you don't know what to do with money. Amen. Whether they threaten you that you will not get married, I prophesy from here. Then men will come for only you. You will choose from among amen. them. You are not saying a better amen here. Amen. The 
Bible says, if you read from verse 24, the Bible says they bound the boys, they tied them, and they carried them on their head and threw them into the fire. Into the fire. Kali Basakayata. They threw them into the fire. As soon as they entered the fire, Kali Baha, King Nebuchadnezzar said something. He rose and ran to the fire. He said, But I threw three people into the fire. I, I it's only three people. I know there was a Shadrach. I know there was an Abednego. I know there was a Meshach. I threw three people into the fire. What is happening? That I am seeing four people. Ladies and gentlemen, anytime a servant of God is is a is threatened anytime a believer is threatened God come down in another way hear me and hear me well God is about to surprise your enemies I say God is about to surprise your enemies hear me sir hear me man sit down God does not leave his children alone in the midst of threat in fact, if you want to know that your God is an action God, let people threaten you. Let people threaten you. Because there is a compartment of God that will not show until you are threatened. I can tell you vividly as a pastor, as a man who loved God from youth, before I became a pastor, I can tell you at every point in time that your life is threatened, that the enemy threatens you, God takes you above their imagination. Hey! You didn't hear me. And so, if your life is not under threat, you need to pray for enemies to threaten you. Because threat is an opportunity for God to show up. Hey! Hey! This word is not final. Yes. Which Babala word is speaking against me? Hi. Mortemize. Which Babala word did they carry your picture to? Yeah. Which Babala word did they carry your clothes yeah. to? Which Babala word did they submit your name? Yeah. Who is making incantation against Fire. you? Ay, 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 Tonight, thunder will blast your head. Yeah. Sit down. Let me preach. Isaiah 44 verse 25 E kuapa tiaka tu maha liku sabarika ta E retua kazani teketeshka If nobody is threatening you it means where you are you are too cold When you are cold nobody will threaten you And if nobody threatens you you won't see God in another dimension those of you praying, oh God, I want to see you in another dimension. I want to increase in level. Ladies and gentlemen, what brings God in another dimension is threat. Let your life be threatened so that they will see the God that you are made up of. The enemy's word is not final. Do not be afraid. The Bible said, do not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, because they can't hurt you. The Bible said, only with your eyes will you behold your desire upon them that hate you. He says, sit down at my right hand until I make all your enemies your footstool. For in the days of power, even the enemies will salute you. That kind of power is about to break loose on your head today. That dimension of power is about to break loose on your head. Hey, 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 hey. 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 I said it's about to break loose on your head. Amen. Isaiah 44 verse 25. The Bible says, For those who are threatening you, the Bible says, he frustrated the tokens of liars and make it native doctors, street doctors. He make it doctors, native doctors in your offices. He make them native doctors in your, around your shop. 
if you are selling in modern markets and any native doctor in modern market either native doctor or native necromancer i don't care who they are the bible says he make it diviners to become mad and he frustrate their tokens i profess i profess everyone divining anything upon your head today my god will frustrate them I said tonight they are frustrated. Amen. Frustration will send them back to their village. If they vow that you will not buy car, I prophesy by the mantle of God. I see. Hey, I prophesy by the mantle of God. I see. Before this year is over, they will see your five cars. Amen. If they are saying uh, you will not get married, uh, I prophesy by the mantle of God upon my life uh, that this year they shall attend your wedding. Amen. I prophesy if there is anywhere saying you will not go to school or saying you will not get a job, I prophesy that with their eyes they will see you wear your suit to your office. Amen. You are not saying a better amen here if you are there. Amen. He frustrates the tokens of liars. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, God is in the business of frustrating enemies. He's in the business. God is all around the space frustrating the enemies of our life and destiny. Hallelujah. If anybody is your enemy making statements against you, congratulations. Oh, 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 you didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. There is anybody anywhere being there in your village, being there in your compound, hey. being there in your shop, hey. being there around your family, yes. making any derogative statement against you. I am here tonight to congratulate you because my God is about to frustrate your activities. Yeah. The Bible says in Job chapter 5 and verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord Himself that frustrate the talking of the crafty, He frustrate the plans of the demons so that their hands cannot fulfill their plans he said their hands cannot fulfill their plans in other words whatever they are planning ladies and gentlemen whether you like it or not people will plan against you don't ask me pastor why are they planning against you if they don't plan against you how can God lift you up hey. are you aware that your God is a show Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The God you and I serve is a show master. Do you know why God will bless you? He will bless you to show to the devil that he is God. God will bless you to show to the devil that they can't do you anything. You didn't hear me. Hear you. Can we speak American English here? You can't do me nothing. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. You can do me nothing. Hey. You can do me nothing. Say it like you mean it. You can do me nothing. Who are they that speaks against the Lord? And is anointed. Psalms 2 from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says who are they that sit and mock and speak against the Lord and is anointed. He said the Lord will sit in the heavens and laugh at them. He will laugh at them. He will laugh at them. In other words, God will make a caricature of your enemies here. Yeah. Amen. Who are they? Wait, 
like your seat. From the beginning of the teaching, we told you, the Bible said, who is he that saith a thing and it cometh to pass? Who? It was a challenge, man. This is God himself speaking. Who are you? Have you forgotten Lamentation 337? Who is he? God is challenging those that are threatening you. Who are you that you can threaten my son and my daughter? When I am alive, ladies and gentlemen, the only time that the enemy can win the battle against your life is when God is asleep. What did the Bible say about God sleeping? What did the Bible say about God sleeping, man? God doesn't sleep. Oh. He neither slumber nor sleep. If God cannot sleep, then you are already the winner. Amen. 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 If God be for me, who can be against me? Never. If God spare not his only son, but freely give it him up for you and I, why won't he freely give unto you all things. Somebody holler, I have all things. I have all things. Shout it loud and clear. I have all things. God is concerned about you. Yes, sir. God is concerned about you. Yes, sir. The Lord said, I should tell you that the only time that the enemy can win the battle over your life is when he's sleeping. But, the, listen, church, you don't understand. The Bible says, God neither slumber. There is no sleep without slumbering. What leads to sleep is slumbering. Slumbering is... The Bible says God does not slumber. Talk more of sleep. Where will the enemy pass? I prophesy. You see. Everywhere they are chanting incantations. Fire. Everywhere they are meeting. Fire. To ensure that they pull you down. One, two, three, four, five. These five people, wherever they are seated, planning how to bring you down. I decree in their midst, thunder, blast them, and consume them. Yeah. Anybody that have challenged you in the capacity of your God, yeah. before tomorrow morning, their dead bodies will be on their bed. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 7. Yes. Isaiah 7 and verse 7. The Bible says, Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Take counsel. Oh, oh, oh. No matter their plan, it will not work. Yes, sir. No matter their incantation, it will not work. Yes, sir. No matter their divination, it will not work. Yes, sir. No matter the number of native doctors, Babalawo, Sistalawo, Onkulawo, that they consult concerning you, it will not work. Yeah. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. It will not stand. Man. Whatever you plan will not work. Amen. What makes plans to work is when God is involved. Yes. Except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep it the city. The watchman will wake it up. But he is in vain. Without God, ye can do nothing. nothing. Hallelujah. Am I speaking here tonight? Yes. Sir. Am I speaking here tonight? Yes, sir. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 9 and 10. Isaiah 8 verse 9. You will like what I want to say. Associate yourself, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Give ear, all ye far countries. Guide yourself and ye shall be broken in pieces. Guide yourself and ye shall be broken in pieces. He repeated it twice. Why? Because of their evil plans against God's people. God repeated it twice in verse 9. 
guide yourself i will break you into pieces guide yourself i will break you into pieces church look at verse 9 right now that verse 10 sorry verse 10 says take counsel together it shall come to naught speak the word it shall not stand for god is with us hallelujah no, 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 you didn't hear that. Take counsel together, it shall come to naught. Speak the word, it will not work, for God is with us. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not with them. God is with you. Somebody shout, God is with me. God is with me. Somebody holler, God is with me. God is with me. If God be for me, God be for me. who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? For I am more than a conqueror. Somebody jump up on your feet and shout fire. Fire, yeah, 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 yeah. This is not a teaching. It's a prophetic declaration. I didn't come to excite you. I came to deliver the message of I am. Hallelujah. I am asked me to tell you, don't be afraid. Amen. You will know that God called Pastor Ago today. Yes. Everywhere they carry your pictures to. Everywhere they carry your clothes to. Amen. Everywhere they carry your certificates to. Everywhere they carry your monies to. Amen. Today God will show up in their car. Amen. I said God will show up in their car. Amen. Three things God will do to those people carrying your names about. And I will close. Yes. Three things God will do for those people who are carrying your names about. Now hear me. Write these three things down. Write these three things down. Write it down. That's Isaiah 44 verse 25. Put it on the board, studio. Isaiah 40. Write these three things down. You know why? Today's date is what? Today is what? Today is 14th. And it's Thursday. Am I correct? So we have Friday, we have Saturday, and we have Sunday. Three things God is going to do against anybody that have spoken evil against you. Hear me, you are already in a new covenant. Yes. You are in a covenant with Jesus upon this mountain. Amen. Three things God is going to do. Number one, write it down. For everybody who, trots, who, 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 who threatened you, God is going to frustrate them. Amen. The more they plan, the more they lose like Naaman. Amen. You don't read Bible. If you are the type that read Bible, you will understand. Yes. The Bible says in Esther chapter 5 from verse 1 to 6 He said that morning That morning Naaman had concluded with his family Tomorrow I will go and report to the king And then we will get Mordecai and the whole Jews killed And then in Esther chapter 6 verse 1 The Bible said that night the king could not sleep the night Naaman was not sleeping, planning how to kill Mordecai and the Jew. The same night the king was not sleeping. What happened in verse 2, 3, and 4? The Bible says, as soon as Naaman entered the hall, coming to tell the king, let's go and kill Mordecai. You know what happened? The Lord said to Naaman, go and dress Mordecai. Go and color the life of Mordecai. Go and decorate the life of Mordecai and start fanning him and start singing his praises. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of frustration is more than this one? What the person you want to go and kill, suddenly you became a servant to that person. That is the greatest frustration that we suffer. I stand here tonight I and I prophesy yes. everyone planning evil against you. Fire. By tomorrow morning, uh, when they appear before you, they will bow down and serve you. Amen. This is the frustration that we suffer. Yes. This is the frustration that we suffer. The night that Naaman thought of going to the king, to go and kill Mordecai. 
It was the same night the Lord himself appeared to the king. So when Naaman appeared before the king to report Mordecai to go and kill him, before he opened his mouth, the Lord said, go and decorate Mordecai. Wait, wait. I, I like to do a, 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 a drama. If I have all the time, three of you come. Quickly, quickly, quickly come. Church, look at this. Sorry. My son, both of you are wearing black. You know, bad people wear black. But you are not bad people. You people are good people. Mommy, stand here. Stand here. Stand here. Now, this, is, this man here is Naaman. Planning how to kill Mordecai. And in his plan, he already had all the things he needed to get this man killed. All he needed was to pass through this man, which is the king. My mother is the king. You are a queen. The day he came excitedly, Go oh king, I want to go and kill Mordecai. Then the king said to him, No, you are not killing Mordecai. Mordecai. Go and dress Mordecai. Go and give him a new car. Give him a new job. Give him a new garment. Give him a new name. Give him a new position. Oh, the same person he went to kill. He became a servant to the person that he wanted to kill. Before tomorrow morning, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. everybody planning evil against you. They will bow down and serve you. Yeah. Amen. You will see this road. The Lord only sent me to come and deliver a message. That's why I'm not preaching. That's why I'm not teaching. I'm only preaching tonight. I'm telling you, I'm delivering the message. He said, go tell them that anybody that has spoken any negative word against you, it will not stand. And number two, that God will do to those people that are speaking against you and those planning against you. Put it on the board. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 25. The Bible says, he said, the Lord will carry them backward. Put it on the board studio. Isaiah 44, 25. Let them see it. He said, the Lord will take them backward. The Lord will make, what will the Lord do at first? He will frustrate them. He will make them mad. Hey, I, I left that one. If not die, let them die. If not kolo, let them kolo. If not peme, let them peme. But all I need is victory. Hallelujah. Yeah. The number two thing is that they will become mad. When you see an enemy, I don't know who the Lord is prophesying to. There is somebody very close to you. Let's see. In your office, but the person is planning your downfall. As you enter the office tomorrow, you will see the person muttering what to himself, speaking to himself. Hey. And before you know, they will tell you the person have gone colomenta. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he made the vinyls to become mad. Hallelujah. That is number two thing God is going to do. And then the number three thing is he will take them backward. The Lord turned the wise man backward. Instead of your enemies, those people threatening you to go forward from today, according to the word of God, not me. The Bible says he will take them. The Bible says he will take them. The Bible says he will take them. So I prophesy. See. That seat that that person is fighting you that you will not sit down. Oh, yeah. That person, the person is divine in doing everything that you will not sit down there. I decree. I see. That person will vacate that seat for you to sit down. Amen. The Lord will turn them backward. Amen. They won't go forward again. Amen. They will go backward. Amen. And number last, which is number four. Yes. He will make them to become foolish. Amen. Foolish. Amen. The word foolish means idiot. 
no memory. That's why he said, the Lord make their knowledge foolish. The word foolish is a 40 years old man using feeding bottle. You didn't hear what I said? No, you didn't hear me. A 40 years old man using feeding bottle. And then the person, because of foolishness, will walk up to you and say, I'm the one planning to kill you. From tonight, my God will make everyone threatening you to become foolish. Amen. Hallelujah. They will become foolish in the name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands on those four points and begin to prophesy. Lord, everyone planning evil against me and my family. Number one, my father frustrated. Number two, make them mad. Number three, turn them backward. And number four, make them foolish. Lift up your voice. Stand up on your feet in one minute and pray before I pray for you. Lift up your voice and begin to fire prayer. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. Yes. I don't care how highly placed your enemies are. Oh, yeah. My God is a respecter, is not a respecter of person. Yes. Whoever. Yes. Many of you don't understand what I'm teaching about tonight. The reason why you are where you are is because anytime it gets to your tongue, somebody goes to speak evil against you. Oh, yeah. And you are complaining, why is my situation not changing? Somebody is responsible. Yes. There is a diviner somewhere. There is somebody speaking bad, prophesying evil against you. But hear me, sir. Hear me, ma'am. Amen. Anywhere they are, oh, yeah. four things will happen to them. Amen. One, from tonight, my God will frustrate them. Amen. Two, from tonight, they will become mad. Amen. And three, from tonight, God will turn them backward. Amen. And number four, God will make them foolish in the name of Jesus. Hey, amen. Let your amen shout like thunder if you are there. Amen. Hallelujah. And so shall it be. Amen. What they say you will not be. I prophesy. The Bible said their word will come to naught. I prophesy what they say you will not be. Amen. You will become that thing one million times in before their eyes in Amen. the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. The Lord have instructed you and I. Give him thanks. In the name 